But as I was saying, that's what that's when the devil's trait is to destroy, not God's. I'm like, here's them, how, how you say that? You read the Old Testament, you see what happens? People bring on themselves swift destruction. If you don't read the word enough, you won't understand what God says, he'll bring this upon you. You bring it upon yourself. When you rebel against God, you bring these evil things upon yourself. Oh, that's not what the Bible talks about. Yes, it does. You understand? Because he keeps talking about return to me. You see, when we re when we turn from God, we give the enemy like free course in our life to disrupt our life, to disrupt our paths, to do this, to do that. You understand? If you read the Old Testament, he said, I will visit the inequity upon the fathers and the, the children to the third and fourth generation. If you really do with the math of what Jesus, what God is talking about, when you fall away from him, bad things happen. Do you understand? Why do the bad things happen? Because the enemy gets let in. God doesn't do it. You do it to yourself. You bring upon yourself certain things. You understand? I love the Old Testament. You understand? I really do. It teaches me the fear of the Lord. I love the New Testament too. It teaches me to love more. That's why he summed up all the commandments with what? Love. God is love. There's no hate in him. You understand? He said he hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He didn't say he hate the Nicolaitans. He said I hate the deeds of them. Research what that is. I'm throwing that out there again. Research what a Nicolaitan is. Yo, in this world, when God says it's only one way to get to him, he means it. When he said he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins, he means it. He's telling you there is no other way. You can't love Jesus and be a sorcerer. You can't love Jesus and be a Satan worshiper. You can't love Jesus and worship idols too. It's a lot of things. You can't serve God and mammon. You got to make a choice. You can't love God and practice witchcraft. You can't love God and have idolized statues of Buddha in your house that you pray to. God understands. Yes, God understands. That you must not love him like you say you do. Because you loved him how you say you do, you wouldn't have some of this stuff in your houses. You understand? You wouldn't do these things. Read the Old Testament. When God gave them a, pl a place, he told them to get rid of all the pagan stuff that's in them houses. Don't take none of that stuff with you. Crush it. Ground it up. That's a, don't take it with you. You understand? Do the math, people. God tells you specific instructions. It's up to us to, look, to live by it. You know, I've been hearing about these essential oils. Oh, man. And Christians are loving it. Hey, this, this all brings you peace. This all brings you prosperity. This all brings you comfort. This all brings you that. I could have sworn God gives you all those things. Why well, do I need an oil for it? Now you get to a point where you depend on the all, the creation, more than the creator. You understand? Your, your help comes from the Lord. You understand? Do the math, people. All these remedies and all this other stuff, y'all gotta be careful with that. You understand? It's easy to make an idol. Very easy. You understand? Material, spiritual, physical, whatever. Many ways. You understand? Like I said, I know a lot of people don't like to read Revelation. I know you don't. You understand? I know you don't. People don't even want to hear it. You know, I'm telling you, people in a place right now, they just want to hear good news. But you got to understand what good news is. Every word that proceeded about the mouth of God, that's good news to me. And the thing is, you got to understand that God works through people. God sends messages your way. He sends people to tell you things to do. It's up to you. But you know, one of the favorite sayings of most people in this world is, you can't judge me. Well, you might want to let somebody correct you now, then God correct you. When it comes time, you rather be judged now? And be in a quarter mile, keep left to stay on I-10 East. You wanna wait. 
You understand? Are you ready to wait? You just ready to just live your life, doing whatever you want to do, with no correction or no nothing like that. You might well go to Mad Max days. You understand? Might well live like that. Straight Keep left to stay on I-10 East. You understand? It's crazy how people don't like correction. It's crazy. But you hear so much of song, only God can judge me. Who works for God? Who God works through? Who does God work through? But you know what? You got to be careful. The God, the Bible talks about in the last days, no man won't have to teach another man. That means people are going to stop. People are going to reach a point. Christians are going to reach a point where they ain't telling you nothing no more because you should know yourself. They just going to shut down. You understand? It's time for you to get to know them yourself. Because the, the nations in the world is getting more stubborn and more rebellious every day. More hateful. More haters of God. Every day. Every day. It's getting worse. That's why the Bible says, Jesus says so many times, those who have ears, let them hear. A lot of people's ears are going to stay stopped up. Stay with earplugs in. So guess what? What's the use? What's the old saying? No sense beating a dead horse. You gonna get to a point, you're like, you know what? I'm tired. I ain't got nothing else to say to you. If you won't listen, so be it. You understand? That's, that's, that, might be, that might be my mission for you, but you know, I might be done in regards to certain people. That don't mean God's not gonna stop sending people, it's gonna stop sending people your way. But some people are just gonna get fed up. You understand? They're like, well, you know what, forget it. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna even say nothing no more. You know what I'm saying? I keep telling them this and that. You gotta think about how often Jesus taught with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and they still couldn't hear. You know, that's got to be tiring. Like, telling people the same thing over and over again. That's why it's good to study to show yourself approved. But I hear all kinds of things. I hear people say, uh, I ain't gotta listen to man. I know God myself. And then you start talking scripture, they lost in the sauce. Huh? You, I thought you knew God. But you don't know scripture? Hmm. The Bible says, if somebody comes to your house and don't have this doctrine, receive them not in. So if you know God, you should know his doctrine also, or somewhat of it. You just should know some, some parts of it. If you know God, you understand? I, had, I went through that phase too. I read the Bible. I was like, I don't need nothing. The Holy Spirit going to tell me everything. Then God was like, hey, start back reading. There's some small stuff I want you to know. I didn't put that understanding in you just yet. Now, I'm going to let you read some more. Understand this. Do you understand? You can study the Bible your whole life and not understand all of it. I don't think it's a man or a woman alive that understands every detail in the Bible to the team. I don't think so. I don't think it's made that way. You know why I think it, God gives it different people and different types of knowledge so you can come together and learn from each other? You understand? Because you'll get to a point where you feel like you don't want to listen to nobody else. I draw close to hear anyone. You understand? But during my growth spirits, my growth spurts, sometimes I just sit back and I study alone. Because I want to learn some more alone. You understand? I do that. I do those phases. And I think every Christian can relate to that. When you just want to study yourself. And the thing is, it's God that tells you to. You understand? God say he'll give you rest too. Sometimes he'll give you a little rest. Hey, no, you ain't got to worry about it today. I got you. You know, you accept it. Read your Bible. It tells you everything. It tells you everything you need to know. It's up to you to realize it. You know? Like I said, I just know everybody doesn't like revelation, but you should. You should get grounded in it. At least once a year, you should try your best to read revelation. Just once a year. It don't take long. Re revelation got like 22 chapters. That's it. Matthew got about the same minute. 22, 23. It's not a big book to read. Revelation is not a big book. It's very small. It's very short, simple, sweet. You understand? It's good to read it every once in a while. 
You understand? Get out the phase when you're looking, when you get to the point where you're looking for what you want to hear instead of what you need to hear. Break out of that phase. Lord, I just, I just want to read something I need to hear. I want it, but your need gonna become something you want. You're like, I want to hear something good. I want to hear this. They thing, you know, you done packed up all the, the good stuff and set it to the backside. You start focusing on certain scriptures that hear that say what you want to hear. Get to a phase where you want to hear whatever God wants to tell you according to his will in your life. You get to that point, you'll be more open to listen to other people. You knew that, right? When you seek God, you're going to be open more to listen to other people. You can learn from anyone. A 12-year-old, a 39-year-old can learn from a 12-year-old, a 14-year-old. You want to get to that point where you're ready to hear information from the Lord, from anyone. When you go to the store, you're hoping that somebody's going to drop some knowledge on you. You understand? Don't get to the phase where you don't want to hear nothing from anybody else because you study yourself. No. Sometimes it's good to hear from other people. It keeps you grounded. Because you got to realize God talks, talks through people. He does. You understand? He talks through people. And that's good. That's good. You understand? That's great. You understand? You're not still, still not putting no trust in man. You put your trust in God. And he's going to talk through anybody. If God can talk through a donkey, he can talk through anything. Let me tell you one more story in regards to my life. You know, like when I was going through spiritual warfare years ago, and I just, I didn't know I was fasting and then like this, God could talk to a squirrel. So I finally came back from church. I gave my life to God 10 years ago and I, I couldn't eat, man. I was just, I didn't realize I was fasting for weeks. My appetite was just horrible. And then, you know what told me to eat a squirrel? I know people like, well, a squirrel talked to you? No, that's not what I said. I said, a squirrel told me to eat. I just said, talk to me. I'm looking on the, in my sister's backyard and the squirrel just started eating. Or eating an acorn or whatever it was. And the voice said, eat, Houston. And my appetite was messed up. And whenever, when I saw that squirrel eating, and then it got the gate in my mind, hey, eat too. My appetite came back. God can talk to you through anything. You just gotta pay attention. You understand? You gotta pay attention. You gotta think of who created nature. God. Who created all things? God. So he can use all things. You know, I, I love that scripture. All things work for the good of those that love God who are called according to his purpose. All things. And when I when I hear all things, that makes me focus on the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. All things. Not certain things. All things. Everything you go through. All things. All things. Let me stress that again. All things. Not some things. All things. All I gotta do is read read about Peter and them, read about the apostles, how many messed up things they went through. Jail, scourgings, stonings, all kind of things. All things. But we live in a world right now when a watered down Christian, they don't want to go through nothing. If I read anything about the New Testament, Jesus went through a lot. His apostles went through a lot. So I'm not expecting my life to be all pieces of cream. That's what the afterlife of. That's what heaven comes into play. That's when I have to worry about none of this, no more. Or when I go to sleep and I rest for, for God to call me back to heaven. You understand? On this world, you gotta think about it. you're trying to win souls. You're in a war. A war has casualties. Soldiers die. Do you know that? Some soldiers get hurt. Like in the military, I was in the Marines. I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the infantry unit, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. I was the communications, I was in the communications division department. You know, radios, computers, this and that. You see, just like the, the military has different parts, you see, I was 
it's kind of weird. I was in the communications. <laughs> I was in the networking department. Now I'm in the networking and communication department for the Lord. You know, but even then you had people on the front lines. Some of the radio operators had to go out with the grunts and be their radio operators. So they was placed in the midst of the fire too. It don't matter what kind of job you is. Every once in a while, you're going to have to go out there too to the front lines. When I went through Iraq to get to our destination, we had to go through Baghdad. We had to get out of our vehicles, and I'm a network administrator. I had to get out the vehicle with my gun and set a perimeter around the vehicle. Is that because I'm a computer networker? That don't mean sometimes I might not, I got to be ready to get my hands dirty too. You understand? And that's how you got to look at it as a, as a Christian. No matter what your profession is. Healer, giver, you got to be willing to get your hands dirty sometimes. For the Lord. You understand? Jesus didn't mind getting his hands dirty. When he put dirt in his hand and put and spit it and put it on a piece of pierce of irons. What did he do when he, he rode in the dirt? He didn't mind getting his hands dirty. He didn't mind getting out there getting a little footwork. A little groundwork. You understand? But no. This day and age, Christians just want to live in luxury. They don't get no groundwork. They don't want to do no dirty work. Oh, that's not what we're supposed to be as a Christian. What? You better read your Bible again. David had to slaughter some people to get the. He had. To, he was a war. He was a soldier, a fighting king. Then along come his son. No war for a while. Solomon was a wasn't a, a, a man of war. He was a man of leisure. God has given the world peace. He has given the children of Israel peace during that time when Solomon took over. There was no fighting during Solomon's days. It was more relaxation. You understand? And that's how the, that's how the scripture works. Sometimes you got to get out there and do some things. Sometimes you got to sit back and relax. It's changed. That's why I said being a Christian is not what everybody thinks it is. You have to realize something. Different parts. You understand? Different parts. You know, when I joined the military, I was like, man, ain't no way a war gonna set off. First year there, 9-11 happened. We already knew they finna send us overseas. But I'm just happy that God was blessed. God has blessed our unit to come back with every soul. No person died from my unit. That's good. That's God. That's God's working. But guess what? It didn't go that way the second round. When I got out, I get a call back. Some good soldiers lost their lives. And guess what? Some good soldiers in Christ are going to lose their lives too. He's going to call some of us to rest soon. Because guess what? Everybody dies. Everybody dies one way or the other. We just got to be happy with that too. Grieve, mourn, do whatever we got to do, and move forward. You understand? Because you don't know what. You got Christians overseas doing all kind of things for the Lord. You understand? You see, God has placed us in America where it's so laxed. You got freedom to talk about God all the time if you want to. And why aren't you using that freedom? I don't know. Why aren't you using it? You're trying to prep people. How can they be prepped if you keep your mouth shut? The Bible would have never been written if the disciples just set up and then did anything. If David would have never did anything. If Moses would have never did anything. They did some things. You understand? And that's what you want to point at. You want to figure out what God wants you to do for his kingdom. Because he still got prophets today. He still got healers today. He still got people who in tongues. He still got people blessed with finances to help other people. He still got all these things. The body is made up of different parts. You understand? I hope these words touch you in a special way. I hope you have a blessed day. You understand? You know, I just want people to understand. Being a Christian... It's not all sugar-coated. You understand? Eminem's even got a hard center. You understand? You just got to be careful. You got to be ready. You Don't tell them what God may have you to do. You understand? Most people think they're called to preach in a pulpit. You may be, you might not be. You might be called to do something totally different from that. But that's how the world looks at everything. You're called to preach. Everybody's not called to preach. People got different different job titles in regards to this, the Christian faith. You understand? You got to look at it like that. Everybody has different tasks. 
same will, same God. Have a blessed day.